Hey guys, my name is Theo Kalianos and I'm a part of this ESS Academy and we're putting together some devotional devotions for you and your family to enjoy. Uh, hopefully they are causing you to consider a relationship with Jesus and if you have a relationship with Jesus, we pray that these resources are watering that relationship. Today we're going to be uh, talking through John chapter 20, verse 24 through 27. John chapter 20, verse 24 through 27. It reads, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was with the disciples when Jesus came. And so other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Now they're talking about we've seen Jesus after he rose from the dead. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand to his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Now, I have no idea exactly what Thomas is going through in this moment. Uh, the last time... More than likely, they see the Lord as um, in, in a horrible state. He's been beaten beyond recognition, um, and he was placed into a tomb. And now we have some of the disciples saying, we've seen the Lord. And he's just saying, hey, unless these things happen, I'm not going to believe. I, I want you to notice what God uses in Thomas's life that would cause him to believe. It was his scars. In essence, Jesus is saying, hey, if you want to know that this is me, notice Thomas didn't say, um, even if I see him, uh, I will believe. He said, no, I have to see the man with scars in order to believe. It wasn't just a resurrected man. It was a resurrected man who had scars. And I love how Jesus could have healed his entire body in a glorified state, but he kept the scars because there is a reality that scars are going to speak to some. And many times, the scars that we carry, that we think disqualify us, are actually the scars that speak loudly to another who is in pursuit of wanting to know who Jesus is. And so here we see Jesus saying, hey, I am who I said I am. I am alive, I am well, and my scars reveal not only my identity, but my scars will also reiterate my love for you. And so how does this play into us? Well. I think many times in our life we try to hide our scars. We try to keep our scars hidden because we think our scars will disqualify us. But the truth is, is that in order for God to actually receive any sort of testimony that would cause people to believe that he is who he said he is, it has to come from a people who are scarred. It, do, it doesn't mean that we aren't, um, it doesn't mean in the process of being changed that we're the same person we were when we met Jesus. We are a new creation in Christ. But there is a testimony attached to the old man. There are things that we did in our past that have inflicted wounds upon our life. And instead of hiding those things, what we're saying is give those things to the Lord and allow those mistakes that you made in your past to become a testimony so that God can be revealed through your scars the same way he revealed to Thomas who he was through his scars. So we want to engage and interact with scarred people. I mean, can you imagine what Paul the Apostle's body looked like after being flogged and beaten as many times as he was? Can you imagine the scars that were on his body? Um, he didn't try to cover those up. He actually let those scars speak loud. And he let, just like Jesus let his scars speak loud and clear to Thomas, I think it's time for you to actually stop covering up your scars and allow God to use the scars in your life to testify that he's the one who healed you you shouldn't have made it through that trauma, but you did. You shouldn't be where you're at today, but you are. And the scars are a testimony of God's faithfulness and goodness. So it's time for us to maybe roll up our sleeves and maybe expose some of the things that we've been trying to hide. You have to understand that we defeat the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The testimony of what Jesus has done through the death, burial, and resurrection, but then also the testimony of what Christ has done in your life. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time.